to uh, review with. That like uh, the... I, I plan to do some training sessions with my local friend too. Oh, okay. So that okay. he has something to to work off, like how it looked like for me to set expectations. Oh, okay. okay. So yeah, we're, we're just uh, okay. So, just, so now that we're recording, and uh, it's just the basic rules, we'll go over that again. It's gonna yep. the two d six. We're we're doing this so it's a real simple system. Anything that you feel it, that you would be really, really good at, you're a pro at, plus three. Anything that you'd be kind of like fair, you know, just just roll the uh, 2D, 2D6 d and, and add maybe one or two. If you think that if it's something that relates to quickness, because you're, you're thinking that you're a quick two-handed type fighter. Um, anything that you're bad at zero or really like totally untrained out of the loop you'd be like a minus three so and that's basically it that's kind of the uh rules that we'll have when we do a practice it's just because it's a simple rule set easy resolution anything normally that you need to resolute it would be a six or higher if there's pressure eight or higher uh, if it looks like something that's near or near impossible, ten or higher. So uh, I uh, those are, are the basic basic rules. Um, staying in character. So speaking character, first person. Meaning when when you say stuff, when you do an action, you say I approach this, I do this, I you know wander this way and look up and down in the court, that sort of thing. And when you speak, just speak naturally. Uh, to the other characters, and uh, not to the air, of course. And uh, yeah, that's basically about it. Um, I'll uh, what I'll do is I'll end up taking this recording because I'm not going to be doing this as a broadcast recording, but I'll have it available for uh, your friend to uh, take a look at and for yourself. Fantastic. It, I'll I'll upload it as a private kind of like a. a a not uh oh. yeah a private like a kind of thing setting. so so i'll give you the link so that he, if he has the link he'll be able to to watch this so very easy that's great <clears throat> all righty and we decided that uh, uh besides theme thimble which zonalar is uh is playing uh there's going to be loric the thief and uh loric will be cautious and critical and that's how I will be playing the NPC. So just to uh, get that out there. And uh, alrighty, to uh, to start, the whole idea is you have uh, found out about a place that could have a cache of cool magic and all kinds of different stuff. You heard it was formerly a uh, headquarters many like decades ago heard it was dec uh, uh, headquarters of some wizard and and f fighter kind of uh, warrior kind of guy uh their names long lost but uh it used to be where they where they hung out apparently lork ha had had <clears throat> has this map and and uh he he's uh he needs somebody with some uh muscle and uh and that kind of thing so that's mm. that's kind of the setting that we're gonna have to start off with all right um okay before you and we'll start now um before you along the cliffside there is a, an indentation into the side wall of the cliff, veering in further, a well-carved out 10-foot wide corridor heading into the rock further in. You can see the sconces on each side unlit, old torches stringing down along the sides of them, uh, dwindling pieces of old, withered uh, spider webs. Darkness within. Lork looks down, says, Well, we made it all the way up here, but, man, that's kind of a scary uh, proposition to go into the darkness. 
Man, um, it's just like the stories. <laughs> just like the stories. He pulls out his his torch and he's like, a little bit better. He he feels the weight of it than uh, what those things look like up on the up on the walls. He goes ahead and takes his flint and steel and starts and gets a fire going on his on his torch. Um, good, he hands good. it to you. The light Here, you, you 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 hold it. Oh. You hold this one. He hands it to you. I take it. Yes. Ah, cool. Uh, he grabs one of the older torch sconces up there. He's like, ooh. Uh, he's, he starts flicking his, his, you know, flint. Gets that one starting. It's much more smokier. But he holds it in front of him. And he says, well, I'll proceed down. He starts going into the darkness further. I'll take a second as I uh, hunch down to my heels, open my backpack, and I dig out a small stave. Uh, it's a uh, it is uh, it is metallic. <laughs> the gnome engineering will help me here, and I unfold the safe into a ten foot pole. Click 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 click. In one hand, the other one, the torch, moving. After look, his torchlight is dwindling up ahead as it flickers back and forth in front of his body. He's looking up and down at the features of the walls and everything. Oh. I slowly, yeah, go for it. <clears throat> I make a uh, little taps with the. Stave, making sure I don't. Uh, uh, if there is a trap, that I will not be the one falling into it. Like, yeah, that's that's what it taught me. That's what my grandpa taught me. Always get the stave. Never go into a dungeon without one. Lord turns around and hears you banging on the uh, tapping on the floor and and stuff. Ding. He's like, I, I haven't seen anything so far. But there's something up ahead. I can barely see it. It looks to be uh, possibly a, a, a door. And he starts moving forwards a little bit more, checking the floor as he keeps on going. I check behind me, looking if this cave has hidden angles that uh, I can only see with the fire in front. The dwindling light, twilight behind you from the entrance. It's hmm. a continuous tunnel going down straight, 10 feet wide, 10 feet high. <clears throat> well, I'm catching up, Lork. Jogging towards Lork, his position. He stops and looks in front of him. The door is a large wooden made of oak with the striations and the ancient weathering from many many decades of water damage it's blackened in in some of the creases of the of the veins of the of the wood and Along the side, he says, oh, looks like somebody's been in here before. Some forced entry. The uh, edges of the door have been chipped away. He kind of shines his torch around. You really think so? I don't know much about doors. I usually open them. He puts his hand up towards the door and pushes it. It cracks as it makes a noise and moves to the side, revealing a continuing 10-foot corridor beyond. Smell must in the air, mildew. Hear the drip dank sounds dripping from the ceiling. Lork moves himself in and you see his torch disappear around the edge of the door where it opens as he continues through. Lork? Where are you? 
I don't see the torch. I, I'm in here. I mean, I'm in, I'm in, I'm just past the door. Oh, th there's some weird magic happening. Wait, I'm, I'm moving after him, looking around like, is this like, what is this magical effect? Um, it's hard to tell. I think it's just the darkness. Maybe perhaps there is some sort of uh, magic around here. Oh. Uh, mm. Up ahead. The corridor continues on by about 10 feet, and then you see it veer out on either side like a, like an intersection, left and right, or continuing forwards. Hmm. That's kind of suspicious. You he got the, like, you packed the chalk? Oh, yes, here. Uh, goes ahead and opens up his pouch, pulls out a stick of chalk. Cracks it, flings a piece over to you. Um, a small symbol pointing towards the exit to the floor. And Lork moves ahead slightly to check around the corner of each in the intersection. He's like, oh, these are alcoves. They... Looks in. He says they dip in about 10 feet as he looks back to you and he puts his torch up ahead and it just continues on further. I can see about 20 feet ahead of me with this. That's about it. Okay. Where should we go? Straight? Hey! Hmm. I'd tight. like to... <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god. It's it's a dust in the cave. It's too much I for my it. nose. <laughs> Let, let's check the alcoves. There might still be some coins or stash. Somebody entered and put some coin aside before leaving. Looks, oh. Corner here. He looks to the left alcove and points his torch down. The remains of a backpack tattered. Oh. He approaches it, dips himself down to the floor level. He starts looking at it. the backpack is like falling apart in his hands as he pulls it apart. He's like, oh, this is <laughs> there's nothing in here but bits of rust. And he uh, he kind of just dismisses it. He's like, ah, leaves it there. As and, it's falling apart, I'm trying to think like. Is this backpack even from the local city? Or is, is it uh, like, uh, does this look handmade to you? Or is there a brand attached? Um, this is, he looks at, this is uh, just uh, some pieces of leather <laughs> sewn together with some uh, sinew, but mostly falling apart. And is he? picks yeah. up pieces of it and it's just like the thread in it is just deteriorated. Nothing of value, that's for sure. That's uh, Rot, I'll go over to the leather. other. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let me take a look at the other alcove, then we can move on. I make a quick chuck, not thinking much of it, like you gotta cover your bases, you know, goblins, skeletons, who knows what's in here. Check in. Elcove uh, is empty, devoid of any other particular interesting things. Couple of old scratched in markings on the wall and carved in like notches, couple of ch -ch -ch. striations dug into oh. the stone. Okay. Well, I'm not the most learned. Maybe just some days that have passed from a previous party as they were exploring. Lork looks uh, over. Quite possibly. He looks further. Him. He looks further down, pointing his torch down the uh, corridor. Uh, shall we proceed? Indeed, oh. indeed. Okay, I'll move ahead. Let me. Let, I'm a. Uh, 
Oh, hold unless, on. Unless, Take... unless you want to go ahead. We... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you're you're the quiet one, but I don't want you to trigger any traps. You take the staff. Oh, hey. Raps kicks the staff in one hand, torch in the other. Look, I, I'm just telling you, all the stories go the same way. That's how my what? grandfather tells me. A group of adventurers go in, and they fall into a trap and die immediately. The first you're... adventurer who survived the dungeon had a ten-foot pole with him. Because Maybe it's bad you. luck. <laughs> he looks at it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should hold the pole. <laughs> no, no, no hey, the survivor. He, hold, he, he okay, chuckles so. to himself. No, no, we'll. It, we're not. If if there's any danger ahead, we'll 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 run back and and, and get reinforcements or something. Uh, but uh, if it's something we can handle, I th I think uh, you know you have my back. Absolutely. If, okay. 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 Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. We we worked we worked on this for like at least a month. He he takes in a deep breath, continues down, and he taps along the side of the wall as he continues down steadily, ten feet, twenty feet, a light thirty chain. feet Boing. down. As I pull a one of my short swords out at the ready, nervous. But relax that I co we covered our bases following him gently. Oh, he's he's pointing his torch up ahead a little further. Um, and it's either another intersection or or uh, uh, alcoves again. I'm not sure. Let's keep our voices down. Okay. Uh, there's no absolutely no sounds in here. He's he's like listening and checking. It's very very quiet. I I don't think there's any occupants in this place, so I don't think Good. we'll have anything to worry about. I th I think. Keep he moves himself up ahead another ten feet, and in towards where you, you can see his torchlight emit the glow of the walls on the side and them indenting to the either side once again as the alcoves were in behind you um he pops his head around the corner looking at each side he he looks and he you see him move his pole around and he's like prodding up ahead on the left side you hear a like a hollow sound emitting from him hitting on the wall. Oh. That's that's different. Yeah, that's that sounds he he looks back to you. Hey, yeah, check this out. And he you see him disappear around the corner into the um, <laughs> just the light emitting from his shadow. You hear him tapping something yeah uh, i'm curious yeah jog jogging after him glad that i took my leather boots with me not making too much noise with the steps around the corner you see him crouch down tapping around the end of a 10-foot alcove once again very similar to the one previous and he's like um there is some form of way to get through here, but I am not seeing anything on how to open it. It this may be just a one-way access. Weird. Mm, uh, behind let me, you. Let me go ahead. Behind you is also another alcove, of course. I'm looking, looking at the wall. If uh, does it look uh, incredibly dusty and cover? Oh, no. <laughs> what are you talking uh, about? Says Lark. Oh, I'm just asking you. Does there's, does there's, it look like covered in dust? I can't see is, it over your shoulder. There's, we're leaving footprints all over the place here. It's <laughs> it's it's severely been hasn't been rummaged through in decades. Oh. Let me, I'm sheathing my short sword and pull out a, a water skin. Take this, 
cover the wall with it. Let me see if there are hidden indentations. The wall reveals nothing of import. Once again, walls. All right. He ah, is going to leave you to it. There must be some way. Uh, what What of the other alcove? Is, is that one? He turns himself Taking around. Taking a look right now as he hears like my voice getting uh, lower, walking towards the other alcove, getting restless. Uh, Dead end. Once again, 10 foot area. <clears throat> what a choke. Was this built for fun? It's maybe some sort of access. Um, probably some form of an escape route that may have the occupants could use. Possibly. He shrugs. Yeah. He... Turning towards Lurk, uh, coming to the intersection, I kneel down and make a big X with the chalk. Yeah, boy, he's, he points back, making sure that you know that's the exit. That way, that way. Uh, he points up ahead. He says, hey, um, I can barely make something out up ahead, but it's on the floor and, and something on the wall way up there, about 30 feet. And he's like okay, looking okay. at the in the dimness of, of his torch light. You just barely see it on the edge. <sighs> let's oh. uh, let let me check it out. Okay. Go first. okay. He 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 gives oh. you the pole here, 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 just in case. Uh, no no no. I, I, I don't have enough hands oh. for all of this. Okay, okay, um, okay. Oh. I'm I'm looking if there's scones um, can I I cannot see any sconces, do you? I want to put the torch away. Draw my other sword. Yeah. He he takes the torch and uh, goes ahead and changes out for the better one. <clears throat> and he douses the old one. Shing. Puts the torch up ahead. I'll come up with you, he says. He puts his hand on your shoulder and braces behind you, holding the torch out in front so you can see better. Fantastic. I okay. turn my chest sidewards, uh, making a slimmer profile as I move forward, expecting trouble, ten, <sighs> looking ten, what he has spotted. Ten feet ahead, it becomes apparent that there is a crumpled bunch of clothes up ahead on the floor. On the wall, you see another batch of clothing deteriorated, held up there by the glimmer of something protruding out of the wall. What is this? Oh, oh maybe we have to get closer. It's pretty dim up ahead as he holds a torch out You're for right. you. Stepping up close, narrowing my eyes. What what could this be? Trying to get close enough and give it a poke with my short sword. Once again, another set of alcoves left and right ahead. But in the middle of this alcove is a body slumped against the wall. A sword broken and sheared off about eight inches above the pommel. Oh, this man met a bad demise. I'm down to my heels, uh, laying uh, the sword, the left sword to the floor. I grabbed the shoulder to turn the body around. The clothes Strip away as you move the body. Um, a pouch Ugh. lays itself out in front of you. Oh, snatching it, leather <laughs> jingles with a weight of some heavy metals. Five gold pieces 
drop out. Clink, clink. Ooh. Well, that's a nice hey, little haul. Struck it. <laughs> not, not much, but hey, it's, it pays for a few meals. For a good girl. Um, there's... He points the torch over, noting the other body. And then, ahead, you can see a set of stairs going up slightly by a couple steps, but the corridor continues on with one more body. I hand uh, the pouch to my friend. You take this. Puts it away. Sword in hand. Let's take the stairs. I'm moving up, getting eager for more adventure. The second body up ahead is impaled against a wall. Um, <clears throat> there is a... Upon the wall, it has a scratching across it on the left-hand side of this body with the words Quasqueton scrawled in dried blood. I'm thinking back. Well, this might be Dwarvish. I've read some of their scripts, but I'm not sure. Lork shrugs. I don't know. But uh, this one, this, uh, this sword on there looks to be kind of broken off. Not much left on this body. Maybe he scrawled it out in his last dying moments. He shudders. Uh, ah. Gives me the creeps. Shines his torch up ahead, continuing up that slight stair, couple steps. Third body ahead is on the floor, face down in the corridor, in the in the intersection. The right hand side of the body, you can see, still clutching a war hammer. In its grip, in its bony, demise, desiccated grip. Well, at least they didn't die yesterday. That would oh. that would make me really worried. It's been some time, I think, before, yeah, since these guys have expired. Unfortunate. Yeah. And if they're still laying around, that means no goblins have nested here and eaten their bones. There should it's, be a pile if there were goblins. I mean, they, they, they should, the, the bodies are devoid of any kind of armor. Um, maybe they've been stripped already, but they did not grab the war hammer. Perhaps. Oh, <laughs> Perhaps yes, this right. dwarf has quite the grip when he was, uh, when he was, uh, killed. Who knows? Maybe they thought it wasn't worth anything. That's an excellent point. He uh, looks ahead, and he notes that this intersection <laughs> continues on to the left and right for some time beyond the 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 light of the torchlight. He moves it ahead, and the corridor ahead continues on, but has two doors on either side, wooden doors inset in the stone walls, and continues on. I'm not paying much attention to Rock as I take a moment to grab the warhammer, uh, loosening it from the skeleton grip, breaking a couple fingers while doing so, stuffing it in the backpack. Oh, I can certainly find somebody that can use a good hammer. Buy it off us and turn around. Lork? Oh, yes. the light. I see. Yeah. I'm coming, Lickers. I'm coming. It's uh, click, 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 well, click, which click. way do you want to go? Uh, the two doors up ahead continue down the corridor, or two of the passages left and right? Hmm. My instinct tells me the left side should be should bring us great treasure. 
think so. Uh, I, I no hope clue. you are right. I hope you are right. <laughs> he <laughs> shines his torch down. He sees. It looks like uh, continues walking up ahead about ten feet. It's gonna turn back towards the entrance. It looks as he keeps on going. Um, maybe it's going back to where those secret panels were. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, then, then look for a lever. A lever, yes. He's looking around. The, the, the walls continuous carved stone continue on and then veer back in a 90 degree angle back towards the entrance in a parallel fashion from the corridor he came from. And he sneaks his way up ahead, trying to remain silent as he goes up against the wall with his back and continues down. He takes a look around the corner. He says, darkness, as he turns towards you and keeps on pointing his torch down there. You see, as he dips his torch, the darkness encomp encompasses you and then... Oh. He brings it back into view and, and he nods, says, it looks clear down there. I don't see anything, just a continuous corridor. Uh, loosening my shoulders, noticing, oh man, I'm getting tense again. Yeah, we'll check the other one. I'm taking the front. What, you checking Moving the right up. corridor or or just continuing down here? The right corridor. Uh, I don't smell any treasure down here. That's he, uh, let's uh, keep it brief. He comes back towards you with the torch in hand. Okay, same thing. He sneaks himself over along the side. This looks to be the same. It's turning around the corner back from where we came. It looks like it's... He pokes his head around the corner. Brings a light around so it gives him some light to see, but yet still giving you some light as well. He says, yeah, same thing over here. Heads on back parallel from where we came, but continues on beyond the scope of my torch. Yeah, let's let's uh, check it out. All mm. right. E comes around the corner you see him dip and you are enveloped in darkness you can just see the uh light shadow along the wall on the opposite of him as he walks down the corridor and following after around the corner you see the 10 foot corridor continuing on on the side of the wall you can see lork moving his way down the passageway ahead you note that there is a fog like a dust fog ahead and as his torch moves along you see slight glimmers in the air boop, boop. hold on stop don't take a step it's about 20 stop. feet ahead he says that's strange. Um, the fog starts moving another ten feet. Use the pole. Does that? Can you touch it? What? What, what is this? He pulls out. He takes the pole, moves it towards, and he. As soon as he moves the pole towards it, it's like. Some form of the fog comes out, grabs the pole, and starts pulling it in. And he, oh. he's oh like, my God. oh, no. He makes a roll to check. He manages to pull the pull back as it goes. Shkloop, and suddenly the fog moves ahead another 10 feet. 10 feet in front of him and he oh moves back goes, we're moving out of and here he starts Come walking on. back he's like i'm not sure what that is and he <laughs> he runs around it's weird man what the <laughs> fuck 
a fuck that sucks and pulls around the corner. Once again, he he runs. Looking back at you know, where you're running from to towards yeah. him. <laughs> he puts his torch around the corner again to look again. And he sees the fog lunge kind of forwards again another 10 feet. He's like, I'm not sure what that is, but um, I'm sure going into it may mean our demise. <clears throat> you're right, you're right. Let keep your distance. It's quite slow, this fog. Just uh let's uh walk as it moves. I'm pulling out my bow. The fog Start once again away my swords lunges forwards. <laughs> you hear a strange noise as it as it slithers across the wall. That is no oh. fog. It's 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 definitely got some form of mass behind it. You're quite right. I'm looking for how many did I put and pull out the the wooden stick with the string attached to it, makeshift tool for hunting rabbits. Grab a grab a, one of my three arrows, line it up. Walking backwards, uh, keeping an eye on the fog on this beard. The fog slumps again. <laughs> Another ten feet. Pew! Taking a shot. The arrow sinks into the fog and remains in the air. About two feet into the fog. Stays in in motion. And then you notice the thing, the fog moves another ten feet, but you notice the arrow tips upwards <laughs> as it moves. I made a loss of words, Lurk. What can we do? <laughs> the I, string, I got another the string attached to it disintegrates within the fog and the <laughs> line lets loose. Free on the floor. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, keep moving, keep moving. Okay. Which way was that? He moves back I, I, towards, sure. towards the dwarven body on the floor, yeah. back in the intersection. Um, I got an idea. Think? I got an idea. Uh, look, look, I, I brought this just in case, and I grab and like pull out this uh, bauble with a uh, black tar inside, some some oil liquid I've got from the alchemist. Oh, Let's cool. cover the dwarf's body with it. When it's nearby, we light it on fire. Oh, Let it okay. consume it. Okay. Okay. Um. All right. Um. Uh. Where? 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 Okay. 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 He puts his his torch over top of the dwarf's body for you to, you know, position your your uh... swords on the floor. Thick, viscous black tar. You hear covering. that as it appears around the corner. Your arrow I floating in shake a different. The bottle. <laughs> <laughs> it's empty. Um, he looks the corridor with the two doors, or or back where it turns her back around and 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 heads on back to the entrance again. Uh, let's go through the door. We still have some cash, uh, some gold to make, man. It's, it's at least something. Uh, okay, door. okay, light the Left, body. Right. Um, oh. I just, I just grab for the left one, uh, wa walking towards it. Handle. Drop the torch. Oh, wait, oh. I, I mean, light the body with the torch. Uh, you don't want to lose it. You can't walk around in darkness. Oh, okay, okay. He he puts his puts the torch down and he's he's looking back into the corridor and he lights it. <clears throat> the uh, dwarf and body uh, starts consuming away. Fire reaches about two feet high at first, 
and continues burning. And he comes over towards you at the door. Um, uh, looking at the door, giving it a slight push, a notch, a pull. <coughs> cracks. Check. It cracks. Oh. Leaning into it to push it open. <sighs> Opens up into a long, elongated room with... Uh, you can see tables along the sides of this 10-foot long room, 10-foot wide room. Tables, little jars, cupboards up on top. The, the tables themselves covered with debris plates with fuzzy debris on them. Mounds of some form of dusty, encrusted, moldy remains. Oh, this reminds me of my uncle's <sighs> shack. Very, very pungent smell. Ah, my nose, says Laura. It's ah, quite disgusting. Please. It continues down quite far, he says, as he moves his torch along back and forth to get more bearing of the area. This looks like... He shrugs. There's, there's some knives and stuff on the, on the tables, but... Oh, I'm, I'm coming. Uh, my sword's in sheathed again, opening the backpack, looking for the knives, just taking them. A quick look, how rusty they are. Pitted. A little bit of moisture on them. Lots of rust. Various vats run along the sides of the walls. Several shelves. You see dishes, pots, dried goods, all uh, in various forms of uh, decadation deteriorated cooking pots there's chimneys going up <clears throat> along the side um, on some of the areas looking to be like uh, ovens I'm starting uh, collecting several of the pots uh, the metal we can melt that down Gonna offer it to the blacksmith that should gave us a few gold coins too. And um, take take the ones of solid metal, quite heavy, that gives me uh, uh, a lot to smelt. I'm not really worrying about the rest itself. Copper, tin. Yes. I don't even know what metal this is supposed to be. The Lork moves himself in further along with you. And he's like moving the torch along both sides. Yeah, this thing continues on about another <clears throat> 50 feet or so. He's kind of gauging from all the shadows in the in the area. This is a big galley of some form. Old kitchen long, long ago. <sighs> ching, ching, ching. Some clattering as I stand <laughs> up again. Follow. <laughs> he keeps on going. A little further in as well <clears throat> moving along past you and keeping on you know and he's like moves his torch and grabs one of the doors of the of the cabinets and it just pretty much falls apart in his hand as he opens it clatters to the floor <sighs> but suddenly you hear a noise way at the very end and it dwindles off into the distance you hear a crack, crack and then another noise as it dwindles off into the distance something was in here but i think we scared it off oh what a small spider or something he, sh he sh shrugs. I don't know, but I think he 
whatever it was, decided to make haste before we got to it with the fire. <laughs> he swings his torch There might around. be treasure ahead. If uh, the treasure party ended up here, we might get their gold. Or any Who knows? Loot. Who knows? He, Let's take on. it. He walks up ahead, keeping on going through, kicks yeah. uh, a pot. It goes, <laughs> swivels around on the floor, making a strange noise. He keeps on going. He sees that the <clears throat> the galley turns around to around the corner to the right. And he keeps on moving around to check around the corner. He's like, ha, ah, door, it's slightly open. And by the looks of the tracks here, ooh, strange. And he looks at some of the pots and they, he's, he's points down. He's like, look at this pot itself. Seems to be melted in a sense on one side like pot and then it like ended up curated. that is quite strange what could even do that we didn't walk past any uh any furnace shrugs not too sure so I'm maybe it's some uh, weird i mean it looks like some weird spittle like it ate away on the metal that deformed it the door ahead makes a cracking noise <coughs> starts moving inwards <coughs> and two feathery fronds twitch intermittently from a creature two feet off the ground <coughs> The fronds whip around. You see two beady eyes looking forwards. <clears throat> Lurk, danger! Grab your weapon. <laughs> He's like, I've got my torch and I've got a pole. He he puts the pole. Drop the pole. And... Take your weapon. Uh, I I jump in front of him. Uh, swords drawn. Uh, and uh, thinking how far away the whip like appendages are. move around and the eyes beam on onto you, boom, boom, boom. and it starts Dash, moving towards one step, you. Two step, the creature has multiple legs and it moves in to the corridor, reaching out on either side of the wall. He goes, <laughs> the fronds move forwards. <sighs> Just like training. One for attack, another to defend. And I lurch forward, uh, aiming for an appendage, grabbing the wall to cut into it. Ha! Roll. Seven. Slices into the creature. It squeals. <laughs> the fronds move and bat away at you. The fronds hit you, but more so, the fronds also hit your sword. Your sword suddenly starts deteriorating on one side of it, <laughs> turning into rust. Oh, my, my sword! Ah, oh, you bastard! I uh, swing at it again, this time aiming for the prawns, slicing, uh, trying to slice through it. Roll. A 10. Massive hit. The creature gets skewered and it proceeds to slump to the floor. The <sighs> sword in your hand starts dwindling away Jeez. a little more. Eaten away. Rust. Oh, no. Oh, it took me two months to buy these swords, man. I turn around, Lurk. Are you okay? I'm. I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, I was a little worried. Uh, it might 
He might come out and leap or something. Uh, what is that? It's like a size of a large dog or something. Except, uh, never seen something so bug-like yet strange. I have no clue. And we will stop right there. So, <laughs> what you what you think of that? I think you did. I think you did really really well. You know, I know it's it's hard to stay, and you know, especially if you've been if if you've been playing, um, you know, the in in the one D two D way for so long. Yeah. Ask asking questions like, what does it look like? Like, yeah, how yeah, far yeah. is it away? Yeah. So well, yeah. It's a, bad, uh, a hard habit to shake. Yeah. The the thing is, yeah, kind of incorporated in your in your action is is the way I usually go with it. I'll I'll, I'll include how what I'm focusing on in my action. So if I if that seems to work uh, the best way in order to kind of clarify some questions that you might have, I do use yeah. my NPCs to kind of give you a little bit more information as well too, which uh, which. Well, kind of helps a little bit. I mean, if you were by yourself, I mean, I would expect you to be asking a little bit more through your, through your actions, of course. So, but, I've been uh, in my head. I kept thinking, like, oh, like what uh, what information do I know from my grandfather and his old adventuring days? What this creature really? could be, but yeah, but there's like yeah. no way to ask it if I stay in the third dimension type deal I, I i kept wondering and then dropped it you know like i'm, I'm looking at the creature but i'm not sure <laughs> how, how else to yeah. describe such yeah. an action it, to it, recollect wisdom of the past yeah you could uh you could say um you could say uh i look at the creature reminding myself of the things that my grandfather said to recollect if he had ever encountered such a thing that could be also used and then i okay, could okay. think maybe maybe he did have some this could be something uh that he may have uh reminisced about if he had encountered it uh but if he hasn't it's basically a big question in the air until you uh yeah until you <laughs> decide on uh, on how you interact of course, once you interact with it, you realize it started, you know, eating away your sword, and uh, it turns things say, into rust, it, and it's yeah, a monster. There you go. What it's a could rust it be? Monster. What could it be? <laughs> uh, same thing with the uh, with the creature in the corridor, uh, yeah, which was the gelatinous fog. cube. Gelatinous cube. Yeah. So I, so I may as well throw that in there too. To, I'm gonna to, shoot an arrow at it. It uh, yeah. nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> and then it then kind of gave the clue when when it. When it, when yes. your arrow started turning around with its motion, so it's it's actually kind of rolling towards you in kind of like a cube like fashion. So, yeah, course, it, it, my head my head jumped to the cube immediately, yeah. and I was like, um, "But what would what would uh, my character think like yeah, if it's yeah. just a moving fog?" And even oh, though I, I am yeah. I am reading off of a map, and the map isn't necessarily canon to me because. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, normally i will i will like uh, i'll write uh stuff down and i'll i'll do uh like maybe a, a flow chart chart kind of diagram and just a yeah. explanation on on what uh what might be in the corridors and stuff or the description of the corridors that sort of thing but mm -hmm. when it comes down to like when i describe stuff like uh, things on the walls that that could be a at any level that you imagine them at you know if i haven't uh clarified that they're sitting at a eye height level or whatever, you know. I'm I'm letting you guys figure out where things are. Um, if I describe mm -hmm. a room uh, with pillars and stuff like that, uh, like a set of pillars heading on down on either side of the room, you can imagine them any way that you wish. You could use them for cover, that sort of thing. Even though on my map may not show uh, a method of being like around the corner of it or anything i'm mm -hmm. fine with the player mindset uh, how they imagine it that is totally okay it doesn't have to equal what i have on paper 
or what I have on a map or anything. Yep. As long as I, as and and I think that's that's a key in a lot of uh a lot of like explaining um corridors or rooms just explain all the particulars like there is a chest there yeah. is pillars there is another door that's all i care about how you guys envision those being placed in the room that's entirely up to you and yeah. uh well you'll find that if you're playing with a couple more players that information kind of becomes more solid in front of you as soon as uh, another character is using a a spot for uh you know for cover you know that might be a clue for you to say oh these are pillars sticking out that i could hide behind that's solidifying a little bit more and use Uh, that when you with your with your friends with, with your friends trying to trying to figure this out let them carry the narrative of of how the room is set up uh, because yeah, as as a dungeon master or a game master, it doesn't matter to me. I just have the collection of things that they they can interact with, and uh, however they perceive it, that that tends tends to work way better than you forcing the narrative. Oh, this pillar is ten feet ahead, and then the next pillar is like another twenty feet ahead, and that, you know that could make yeah. for a very long explanation. And uh, yeah, that, also, that, that's when you, yeah, exactly. You start explaining yeah. a room, and by the end of it, they ask, So, how did it look like it? <laughs> I can't remember Nothing. the first part where it was closest to yeah. us, right? <laughs> yeah, you get that, those problems too. So, and you reach it, the end, and you see the hogtide princess on the pedestal. <laughs> Uh, yeah. for the ritual. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? <laughs> I should have known that at the beginning. <laughs> that's the important part. Yeah, I mean, if uh. If it was something like that, it'd be like the torchlight would appear. You would hear a scream at the very end that echoes from a distance, like she yeah. sees the torch, and I would, I would have the the NPC react to to that those certain things. You hear a scream yeah. off in the distance, a woman, uh, and uh, a woman's wail, ah, you know, and uh, that would kind of clue you in that there's something possibly either saw you or it was something that uh, maybe she saw something at the other end or something like that or maybe she's a siren or something you don't know <laughs> you know some sort it's of only thing. here to look like a damsel in distress that's so right that's right come in and as soon as you come up to it she turns into a princess mimic <laughs> in each oh no not the pri- famous princess mimic. <laughs> i love yeah i <laughs> I've, I've had a uh, mimic windmill before <laughs> then they realize, oh no, the whole place is a mimic. <laughs> yeah. So um I would say, yeah, if if you're gonna if you're gonna show your friends, uh keep keep that kind of in mind so that you know yeah. it, it keeps very thing everything loose for you. Um and mm-hmm. don't don't worry about all the particulars of you know of where exactly and trying to explain exactly where these things are unless you have pictures pictures are always cool pictures speak a thousand words before you can open your mouth which is a good thing um <laughs> that helps yeah um for sure yeah yeah um so i'm not too sure if you you're uh familiar with uh b1 uh beyond the uh uh what the, what was it called b b the the b1 adventure uh in search of the unknown this this no, was uh, this oh, okay this that. yeah i i use this as a kind of like a, a typical run through for for players to hmm. to uh you know because i've, I've was, ran uh, what's that i was familiar uh because i've uh, went back and watched uh, your uh your test session with phil Oh, okay. Uh, he okay. went into a dungeon. So yeah, to he... give myself some, what what am I supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, and and Phil did quite well. He 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 did he did end up uh, uh, learning to refine himself a little bit more in particular mm-hmm. ways. Same thing as is when you go ahead and look back at this session, and uh, yeah. and kind of recollect it's always good to kind of look at it from the outside and see how you were interacting because the 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 mind mm-hmm. the brain is not is is particular in in 
in recalling things in the game in a particular way uh, that yeah. may not be exact how you remembered it. And then re-watching it, you'll be like, oh, okay, I see what I did there and and what worked, mm-hmm. what didn't. And, and uh, it, it, it yeah. helps a lot. If, if people did that a lot more, they would start to understand, hey, I could I could make this run a little bit more faster. You know, I could I yeah. could do yeah. do it a certain way that it I'm not I'm not spewing a bunch of exposition to a player. And and those are the things I've learned as I've been as I've been doing this. Um, I used to play just like everybody else did, you know, <laughs> um, you know, using maps, minis, um, all that stuff and uh and saying well you can do uh, this or you can do that or you can do this and that or, or you can do it you know did you think and, about your tech magic spell <laughs> yeah 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 and, you know bringing up all the all these things that are like yeah. uh you know a choice a choice b choice c and if you don't uh, mention them they're stuck because they can't think of it in the moment yeah yeah and that, like then that. you then you have to have the players that that are able to be a proactive player and yeah. uh it's it's not necessarily mean proactive to be like a leader or anything meaning proactive that um that they they look at a situation they see a corridor and instead of just standing there going okay what are my choices they actually say, oh, I walk forwards slowly, yeah. you know, tapping the floor with my 10 foot pole. And, you know, they're explaining yeah. it and perfect, you know, uh, those are that's what you want out of, your, out of your players is for them to explain their uh, their movement, their action in a brief in a brief moment. You don't have to. Uh, and then uh, you're going to encounter people that will have the, well, they explain it in order to tell you that they are going to do this in order to do the next thing in order to do the next thing after that. And those yeah, are I'm, I'm uh, queuing yeah. up four actions in a row. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. You'll have to have your players, uh, you know, uh, you, that could be something that you mention to your players before they start. So it kind of nips it in the bud, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, you know, reduce the desire to program the battle encounter in their heads exactly because you know the first action is only the important part because that yeah. will dictate later on and when their second action comes up it's okay for the player to queue up those things in his head and have those in mind but what happens in actuality at the moment will always be something different than what that player anticipated so therefore his plans will have to change so you know or yeah, or in my or, in my yours? head I, I was thinking uh when the cube came after us am i asking for too much like trying to douse uh, douse it in tar the dwarf body in terms of time management because i have to put my swords away i have to try to find a flask in the backpack and douse it out before he reaches us yeah. but yeah, i don't it, have like a good feeling if that felt like fitting or not if yeah if uh, well as it was kind of slumping towards you you know slowly <laughs> and inevitably uh, i would suspect <laughs> you would have enough time if you feel that you've had enough to- time to go ahead and gather what resources you needed it's totally okay totally okay i'm not uh, you know <laughs> It's like, it, is this one round or two rounds? And would I die on the third round type deal? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I didn't think it was too much. I think what, what you have could could have been done, you know, as a full action. Put this way, grab that. Yeah. Rummage there. Yeah, six seconds. Sure. That sounds right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's another thing. Make sure you know whatever whatever you're playing uh everybody is on top of how long a round yeah. is i've been i've been in games where a round is a complete minute and yeah. that's a little hard to uh, kind of uh wrap your head around at first yeah until and, until you get into it that's the battle plan at round two but you're actually having several sentences and back and forth yeah. at the same time yeah. that's that's very difficult uh we, we always remind uh my game table always says like ah six seconds, man. You can't say that much. <laughs> yeah. Shut up now. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> so as a game master, I don't, uh, uh, I, I try to adhere to my silence. So if, if they're, the only way I can correct another player is through an NPC. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's because I'm an error. I, 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 like, I can't speak directly to you. I can, <laughs> I can describe what's in front of you. You know, I can describe yeah. it, but that's yes. all I can do. And then I can only describe things that the monsters are doing or what the NPC is doing. And I, I'm training my brain not to pop out of Game Master mode and become the floating head that explains things to you uh, in the dungeon. So, yeah, uh, for me, it's a big challenge because I used to be that floating head. And, uh, <laughs> and that's, I, you know, uh, playing is one thing. When you're a player... I find it very easy to play as a as a 3D player, no problem. Uh, 4D, I'll tend to only uh, add things that I think would be obvious. I think I, I wrote it in one comment in uh, in a in a on somebody's channel that uh, something like uh, you know you you would if you walk into a sewing room. Yeah. right a room where somebody sews um i could as a game master go through about a half hour worth of exposition telling you the very in intricate details of the spools of thread uh different types of uh bolts of cloth the sewing machines you describe uh, the 30 all different that's... colors on display but if i say <laughs> a large sewing room full of you know uh fabric and and uh other yeah. uh sewing necessities the player can come along and and say i pick up the scissors off the you know even though i didn't describe scissors that is totally okay with yeah. me the scissors is not gonna i mean sure you could probably use the scissors as a weapon um you could but it's not use, like meta gaming. I use yeah. Uh, I find the scissors. Bolts of cloth, <laughs> bolts of cloth, and then if the player decides, oh, okay, depending on the age that this is, you know, in how long that bolt of cloth has been there, uh, if he's using that as a thing to pull off as a rope or something out the window, you know, put the tie the end of the bolt of cloth oh, yeah. on one side. I could describe it now. That's where my game master discretion could come into. Is this a cloth that is good or is it deteriorated? As he ties the bow, a rip occurs, indicating uh, this this may not be as stable as yeah. you think, right? Or you know, this you may really be very old fabric, out? you know. And then you know, it'll be you know, as he's making his way down. Does it hold? It just yeah. it starts ripping and it gives that tension or something like that. You could add that in there, or he makes it down, but you know he notices that the next person that tries could not, you know, you know might end up with a dire fall at the end, right? Yeah. Thank but you for that... incorporating the sneezes of my wife during the play. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, th these are things that you can do as a game master to either say yeah this stuff is too old uh to use at the moment or you know it may not be apparent as you pick it up i've had that before i pick up i picked up a uh, uh a, an old cabinet with speakers in it thinking oh this is a cool find i go ahead and take it home and as soon as i drop the speaker onto the floor the cone itself deteriorated <laughs> like, like the rubber oh, no. just <laughs> Yeah. disintegrated totally <laughs> and uh, the speaker goes and, and stick so i had to go ahead and repair the speaker you don't know these things until you go ahead and start so you have to kind of yeah. think that way too as well you know sure he may have the scissors in hand but how well constructed are these scissors you know is this going to be a tool that you can use for a couple of slashes before they break or you know it's, it's stuff that you think of um so in a sense, the game master does have some control over the things that the players create or co-create, if if you decide on going. But uh, as it, I would, I would mostly concentrate 
with your with your new players or your old players on teaching them how to do this uh just the yeah. just the just the 3d uh, if, yeah if if they decide if they decide that they're going to co-create something then mention that at the end of the session hey you did a 4d thing there that was awesome you know uh you know you you brought up something that was in that room that was very conceivable you didn't have to ask me if that was there mm -hmm. you just you know just did the thing to find that item and now you have it in your hand you know and that's totally cool that's totally cool yep so, um yeah I'm, any... I'm, I'm already trying to convert my uh, my players and see like how far can i get them to join my magical journey of yeah. uh, <laughs> of uh, just uh no. yeah i mean yeah some some will some will understand uh some will have a preference to stay with the 2d because uh not everybody has a vivid imagination that's that's the that, thing that's you have true. to keep that in mind some players will have a hard time trying to imagine stuff they would rather have you describe it exactly for them and that's where it possibly the npc that helps kind of bring that up it will teach them how to possibly imagine by example um, I'm mm -hmm. not sure if imagination has to be a muscle that you exercise. I think it is, you know, because so as, I, I definitely think it's uh, when I think about drawing, I need to look out. I need to know references to draw oh. as close to the real thing as possible. For sure. So, For sure. yeah. I, but if I, if I draw it, a face, you notice the, uh, the mistakes immediately. Like, you feel like it doesn't feel right, but you might not know why, but it's definitely a visual library. You expand over yes. experience and just looking yes. at things. Yeah. So I've never been in a dungeon, but I've been in a, a castle in Switzerland before. So oh, yeah. I can use that as a reference <clears throat> point of like, oh yeah, old stones covered in moss uh, with uh, little, little plants growing in between everywhere. Right, right. Yeah. Yep. Um I've been I've been in a where uh, where they've uh they used to they used to have an army camp where I used to live. And mm -hmm. uh, there was a, a little practice areas and they would dig holes into the clay uh mountainsides there. So there would be mm -hmm. like these these small places where you could where if you crouch down and you hunkered down on your like like with your knees up to your chest, you could hobble your way into these areas but i tell you man i uh, um i i discovered that i uh, i did not like the idea of uh hundreds of tons of rock above me thinking oh my god <laughs> this could come down on me any second now and i'd be a, like, a little shift alive. somewhere and it just goes down and five just, centimeters and you're like <gasps> you know the panic starts starts coming yeah. in like, i'm not a big fan of underground myself so um whenever we go through like uh like we'll we'll have uh, tunnels through the uh through the uh the mountainous regions here and uh, between bc and, and alberta and uh those kind of get me a little i i can feel the hair on the back of my on, on my back kind of raise <laughs> as we go as i drive through it's just like oh i don't like this you know it's uh definitely so, not a dwarf i see <laughs> so no no i am very much a surface dweller with the sun above my head so. <laughs> But uh, I mean, you could you you could uh, you know you could really relay a lot of that information as a as a as a character, you know yeah. that kind of feeling and impression it on the rest of the players that way too. I find when you're when you're playing with somebody who likes Crispy, uh, Chris is is awesome at doing that. He loves to ground his characters with with his action. Mm -hmm. So he'll always use it to uh, to incorporate some sort of thing that you may learn a little bit more about his character, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, that could also be a good thing for your players to practice too. So whenever you're you're uh, you know describing your action, you pull out the certain little symbol of Alaric, 
you know, the, uh, the, the, um, the bringer of, of, uh, visions and you could, you mm -hmm. could, you know, as, as you described that now we have an Alaric bringer of visions and, and, and the players are like conjuring stuff up in their heads, you know, every little bit of information that the other players are bringing in builds in that experience and becomes more and more real as a as a player in there which is which is cool and having players like that and uh, developing them further like that uh especially when they're new to uh learning mm -hmm. this method of role play uh, it helps it helps you as a game master because they're filling in information and you're like oh this is awesome you know and you're mm -hmm. also getting information that you can use later you may have something that occurs concerning Alaric, the keeper of, you know, uh, secrets or whatever you may have called it, uh, it mm -hmm. within your campaign a little bit further on, use it as a push in, in some form of, of, of method, anything that the players add, they start talking about, yeah, I heard about, uh, you know, this, this, uh, group that came down here before and blah, 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 integrate that into the, you know, you're going to have, you know, the, the dead bodies of, 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 the companions of of this group that came in before and maybe one of them has been corrupted by in there like you know us like a almost like wraith like ver version of themselves and they're the last soul survivor in this in this cave and they had been lost in here for for decades that they've turned themselves into some sort of you know uh revenant of of the party mm -hmm. it, basically he died and re didn't realize that he's dead but he, his body lives on, uh, you know, empowered by the evil that is in here somehow. And you can integrate that into the game so, you know, so powerfully because now it's connected to the players on a on a level that they had brought in. But now it's yeah. real, you know, and, and oh, this is yeah. what happened to them, you know, and, and it brings to those wow moments. You know, oh, this is this is cool. You know, it, it brings so much to the story that you've that you're creating for for this so that that um, seems that seems to be the big strength of 4d where I, I feel like i often try to incorporate what happened last session into the next session or like yes, write it yeah. down this is something i want to return to later but later never arrives <clears throat> because the players go a different path exactly so, exactly so it's very uh, hard to be like and I, and I don't want to incorporate something when it makes no sense like yeah. oh yeah this npc you saved comes up again although he would still live like a hundred miles apart from where you are right now so he yeah. shouldn't be on the on the roads where you are yeah and, and give that feeling of the world is alive people react to you but the people are different now because you went to a different city so do I keep writing down you NPCs and then I have a hundred names down and uh, none yes. of them matter. Yeah, it depends. I've invented on, on the... six taverns and yeah. uh, they don't remember the differences between them. It's like which tavern are we in again? Yeah. Like, uh... <laughs> it, it depends on the scope of your game. If you're if you're doing it as a campaign, certainly it would it adds ammo later on that you can use in a uh yeah. In a smaller uh, kind of like one shot kind of setting where you're just like either doing the whole game in a yeah. four hour session or you're doing two hour and a half sessions, you know, back yeah, to back, so, you know, yeah, you you can write down what I write down is the pushes, the, the stuff that can occur almost instantaneously. So if mm -hmm. if they ended up like fixing a robot but they kind of leave it thinking that it's still not quite ready. It's, you know, and they go down the corridor, leaving it behind. It's rebooting. I'm, I'm writing down, uh, yeah, this robot, it's rebooting right now. And uh, although it looks dormant, it's going to be popping up here any, you know, any couple hours now. And it'll be like looking for the master who, who yeah. uh, gave it life. <laughs> And it'll be an interesting interaction later on kind yeah. of idea in this and, one and shot. Yeah. And then so, it's the players, uh, it's uh, it's their problem to deal with. Exactly. I create the problem. I just watch them deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and staying back and, and not being uh, so exposition 
uh, driven, uh, allowing your players to drive that exposition by their actions, uh, by their thoughts. Yeah, really help and bring the bring the players in. It, did you watch our uh, our uh, our session zero that we broadcasted yesterday? Yes, yes, okay. I did. So that gives you a little bit more insight on what we do in order to build these uh, sessions. All of our really good ones. Um, we didn't do that for Wild Hell, which I think held us back because uh, yeah. for our expectations. Um, it, it very much uh, in your explanations it that showed through a lot. Yeah. With uh, uh, when, no. when <clears throat> the what was it called? The timescape actually came up. And uh, the players were like, and we're still in a shithole after a week. <laughs> like, nobody picked up that <laughs> you should invent uh, what, what you've managed to achieve <laughs> type deal. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so I love the that... raincoat. That was an amazing touch. Uh, I'm a big fan <laughs> of the raincoat. Adding the uh, fronds to you in order to hope that it will take the rain off of you, but yes. nope, at no avail. You are yeah. still the soaked. next description immediately just <laughs> blows it off. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We try to integrate that kind of stuff as you know, because we're thinking about yeah, this would be a good idea, but then oh, suddenly it's like windstorms and the rain is just coming down. You're like, what's the yeah. fucking point of this? You know, you have to think and you know. Sure, it it adds to the narrative. It, it, you know, I think uh, yeah. Shauner did a did a video about about um, um, talky talk. What kind of talky yes. talk do you want in your game? I, I uh, and I I'm like it's gotta either uh, add to what your how your characters are. You know, kind of explains a little bit more, or uh, it's going to drive a plan. So if, if your players are getting together and they're talking over the table at the tavern about the plan, you know, you guys are back and forth and back and forth, and then you'll have some thief sneak in and decide, I hear you're talking about this uh, underground blah, 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 you know, and then he, he, mm -hmm. you, know, you can have an NPC come in and, and ex you know, kind of in integrate more. Oh, it is this place that you're talking about. And then your players are like, ah, oh, damn, we shouldn't been talking so openly about this, you know, thinking, you know, or, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, it's just, it just adds to the narrative, how to, how they're conducting the plan, what their plan is, is a cool thing. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, like I say, or it's something that you're bringing up in, in a conversation and, and, and he, you know, I, I pull out the bag of pistachios and I say, I want one. <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> this guy loves pistachios. You know, and it, yeah. it, uh, j you're just adding things for make your characters believable and uh, have their own little flavor kind of quirks to them, and it builds. What, what it, did it, you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I what do you what did you think about the weird ten foot pole I conjured at the beginning? That's nice. Was, That's cool. <laughs> I, you know, a ten foot. That sounds good. Yeah. It works for me. I, like I say, I give you open, open for what you have, especially in a practice, because you don't have a list yeah. of equipment on your on a sheet or anything. Yeah. We don't have a character sheet, <laughs> so I'm just I'm just saying, you know what? I you almost, think you're I really almost good. prefer it that way. That uh, if players, I, I know, think, it, it, I would have this uncommon item. Just write off some gold and write it up like. Yeah, if, if this situation happens, I'll pull it out. Sure, sure. I mean, you can. I mean, you can even write stuff down. You know, in, in the yeah. beginning of the game, say, okay, if I'm going to be a, this fighter, thiefy kind of guy, this is. You could write down a few ideas of what what your equipment would be really quickly, and uh, and voila, you have a baseline to work off of, and and uh, and uh, especially I, when I you're thinking a... you're supposed to be a competent character in what you do. <laughs> You know, um, you should that's have true, that's true. Like you would think of, I'm going in a dungeon. It's dangerous. Let's bring some backups. Yeah, yeah. It's not like yeah. you're bringing up a character that's like MacGyver. Have you ever uh, seen the old MacGyver? No, 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 no. That was American. This is a guy that that would take you know uh, paper clips, some uh, some rags and and uh, a couple of chemicals, and away he goes. He starts and he's got a bomb. 
you know, <laughs> 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 you know? That, that that's what we yeah. call MacGyvering because yeah, it was built yeah, off yeah. the character MacGyver. So uh, MacGyver actually was if if you watch uh, Stargate. Yes. He's the current. He's the colonel yeah. guy. He's the colonel guy <laughs> in Stargate. Yeah. So. Oh really? It's uh, that's him. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I love the he's, colonel. He's a great yeah. character. So, uh, yeah. So yeah. There's. Uh, uh, I got a. I got a few points. Um, okay. That that uh, that I wrote down now. Like cool. the anchoring part. I I, fe I felt like I didn't really describe where I was. Only that that mostly that I'm following. Uh, following Lord. i know you you did <laughs> take the lead a, you you took the you took the lead a couple of times you know explaining where you yeah. were going to that was fine that was excellent that's fine sometimes you do follow behind you know because you're relying on the uh on the the, the, torch bearer. the skills of the person in front of you yeah that's true, and yeah. uh i mean i i gave you the chance to to grab a torch if you wanted to you know and um mm -hmm. It was entirely your option to, you know, have this, you know, character. You know, I decided uh, I was going to have him for part of the time holding onto your shoulder and putting the torch yeah. forward so that he's kind of like, you know, oh, watch out for that. You know, you could do that or something like that. You that know, that uh, felt really cool as a, as a move. Like, oh, we're working as a team now. That, <laughs> exactly. That exactly. Yeah. So but, uh, uh, yeah. touches like that Desire really, to hold really help. both swords were really strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's you're you're uh, uh, that's telling me your quirks of your character. You know, you want to be armed with two swords. You'd rather have somebody else holding the torch. You know, it's stuff like that. Yeah. It just adds to the narrative of, of the game, and and uh, it makes your characters more real. You know, uh, to the other players. You know, and you and you want to have Absolutely. that. You're you're that's part of your, part of your job as a player, as your character, to uh, convince the other players that you are a well, real character. <laughs> you know, not just something written down on a piece of paper. So, you know, yeah. you're playing beyond what's on on a, on a page here. So, and uh, absolutely. That's why I like to do these practices where, yeah, we don't, we're, we're not writing, we're not writing anything down. I just want you to decide what you're good at, what you're bad at. That's that's entirely up to you. I'm not going to go ahead and say, oh, you can't do that. You know, you're uh, you're a you're a fightery type. You can't do the magic. You might, you know, yeah. you could. You, I'm. That's entirely you. Know, my grandfather told me about glyphs back in the day. And these ones yeah, mean yeah, yeah. water, and these ones mean fire, and you know that, that's totally cool. It's totally cool. I'll integrate it later on in the game. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, I was trying to be like GM. What do these runes say? I know dwarfish, <laughs> but but I brought it up in a way that I, that worked. I, I know that dwarfish. Worked. Let let me see if I can translate this. Like, oh, I I don't exactly know what it means. And I'm kind of like, do I roll here? Like, <laughs> I was very yeah, unsure yeah. that moment. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> All righty. So yeah, uh, um, we'll we'll get you. We'll get. You, uh, I know that we have a couple of players uh, that really want to get into a game, which are yeah. in your time zone. So mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, uh, there's uh, actually uh, two guys in South Africa and another guy who's in I think he's in is he Denmark I somewhere somewhere around there okay um, so there there's there's a there's about four players in your kind of time zone area which uh, yeah. which we should be able to get ourselves a group of uh, maybe newer uh newer to the 3d thing that we could possibly do a couple of practices where we're where we'll, we'll record these sessions but we won't mm -hmm. broadcast them unless you guys really feel that you want to broadcast them but i will once again leave them uh in a situation where i'll give you the links so that you if you wanted to go ahead and share it with somebody that's entirely up yeah. to you or I've, if you just want to, uh, yeah, I've been talking with Nebolas uh, about uh, about oh, okay. him. He told me 
he told me that uh, they're trying to do like something on the water. So yeah, we, we've been chatting. Okay, okay, uh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. And if if you guys if you guys want to do your own thing, like put together your own group of new, you know, a new game master with the new players. <laughs> That's that's entirely up to you guys in 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 our uh, the RPC RPG Crusade is just a place where you can go ahead sure put put up an idea for for your game if Nicholas has an idea yeah. for a game or if you have an idea for a game put it up there make your own uh, uh, I'll go ahead and start uh, positioning players into uh, uh, like uh, your. I think you're you guys are able to make your own games. I'll have to recheck that to see if you can post it onto that particular uh, oh. section. I might do it. I might do my own uh, a separate three D learning uh, sessions so that you yeah. guys can post your own games, get your character players together. And if you want one of us to kind of pop in and and watch or be observers or that sort of thing where we can kind of, you know, or you guys can record the game yourselves. That's, that's entirely up to you, you know, or we can, we can open up one of these, you know, uh, stream yards and, mm -hmm. uh, and have, because our stream yard, you can have, a, we're, we got the pro level, so you can have yeah. as many players as you want <laughs> in, oh. in the stream yard. So, so keep that. In mind. We can open up one for you so you can actually, we'll have one, uh, uh, one of us in there so we can bring the players in like, uh, from the, yeah. uh, lower bottom there. And, uh, it will we'll just, we'll just kind of carry through it and, and take notes and, and, uh, and watch your game <laughs> proceed and, and, uh, give our, you know, lurk give our in the input, background, lurk in the background the while you guys do it, you know, uh, you get and, to play the monster. Yeah. We'll, we'll hit the, we'll hit the record so that you, you can, you can, you can reflect on your session at the end and, and, uh, and then you guys yeah, can do your, awesome. yeah. yeah, you guys can do your own game master, uh, diary or whatever, you know, or tweaker that, that we call, we call them tweakers because we're tweaking, you know, like, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah so you're, we you're also tweaking. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> getting the fix, uh, the role yeah. playing fix, <laughs> role playing fix. Yeah, but uh, the, it's the not idea... good enough. Yeah. This is yeah. <laughs> we have to distill We're, it to ninety nine percent. You know, we we you know, we are pretty harsh on ourselves. So and yeah. and there's a lot of uh, we get a lot of comments going. Why are you guys fixated on? Uh, yeah, we're like, no, we are trying to get better and better at it. We're trying to figure yeah. out ways, because this is new to us too. I, like I say, I, I've been, I've been a one D two D game master for so long. Uh, yeah. The game mastery part is the hardest for me uh, to get to to pull myself out and let the players carry the, carry the narrative. So for me, yeah. it, it was a big challenge. It took me over a year to to do it. I didn't start becoming fully 3D until November, just this last November. So I had I had a few breakthroughs with my Castles and Crusades game. I still have sessions which I still have to like pull out of private, you know, mm -hmm. so that people can see and uh, see how I kind of evolved and went into into uh, into 3D. Um, with you guys, uh, you guys are able to learn from us, so which is yeah. good. Uh, where I had hardly any examples in order to follow. So for me, it was a little tough. For Shauner, it was it was really tough because there was absolutely nothing out there to show examples. It wasn't until uh, Abe Abraham from uh, talking about games started having his live sessions, and we attended those. And uh, we start. Oh, okay. We know how this works now, and we got a little bit of practice with him, and mm -hmm. uh, and and everything. Abraham's not with us, of of course. You know, he's 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 got his own thing going on. So we had kind of a little bit of a falling out with uh, with he's Abraham. No longer so with, no longer with us. What? Yeah, yeah. He's 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 doing his own thing. He's he's a professional okay. game master, and he he doesn't want to listen to our uh, to our fixes for his games because. <laughs> uh for some reason he thinks he, he's he's got the perfect way of, of doing it which is good on him you know he 
He only wants to be so far. He doesn't want to reanalyze his stuff and go, oh, yeah. I could do this better and that better. Um, so that's entirely on onto him. You know, I'm I, I, I get that. Uh, yeah, I, I usually have this when I try a new hobby, I want to do it as good as possible. Yes. And then I burn myself out on the hobby because it's no longer a hobby. It's like I'm, I'm spending work time on this. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, you're going you're gonna to find that the more 4D you go, the less you have to prep. Um, the only yeah. thing I really ever prep for is maybe some ideas for descriptions in the, in, in the beginning and, mm -hmm. uh, and just the NPCs. Because that's yeah. that's your main way of talking to the players is through an NPC. So if you have a if you have a couple of couple of words describing your NPC, perfect. That's a start. As as you are playing the NPC through, that NPC is growing. You're and evolving as well, uh, just the same as the rest of the players are as they're discovering mm -hmm. their characters. And learning, oh yeah, I have a grandfather. That, you know, you know, all, all the particular things that you've been bringing up, and uh, you know, sometimes you forget about them. So you have to go back to these, uh, watching these uh, sessions again in order to kind of refresh your brain. Oh yeah, I did bring up something about that. You know, and, and uh, you realize, yeah. hey, maybe that little little nugget of information ended up becoming the campaign later on. You know, it kind of just spirals into that and rolls down the hill and becomes bigger and bigger and becomes a thing that you guys are pursuing you know so. i i have like the opposite problem right now where i took uh my current well it's not a it's a campaign in the in the setting of it's the same player characters mm -hmm. i've had uh, i've had them run two dungeons out of uh out of the book i just okay. uh, tie them together and uh and uh yeah and after that in the dungeon they found uh, the dead companions of the gnome warriors old uh, mercenary group that uh, she left mm -hmm. or got kicked out of oh okay uh, okay yeah but they cool. found the dead bodies cool. and now it's like well i'm gonna find uh, my old mercenary unit and uh report in that these people died yeah yeah so let them actually know uh, we, we found their bodies and now we are three sessions later of that and every session was like my player completely forgot that was a that was a thing <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't remember he doesn't really care he doesn't even think about it it started in when, the forefront you it was a no, thing in the it, past yeah. to him so yes yeah so yeah. why are we going to Silvery Moon again? Like I don't know. Like the the elf wanted to read the magical books, I guess, and then we turn to the player with the magic with the elf. Like that wasn't my plan. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, should we even go to Silvery Moon? Maybe, maybe there I just you go. Focus yeah. On this, yeah, like maybe I just cut. Uh, you know, cut the strings, yeah. let something yeah. exciting happen in the next city that they're actually going to visit for sure. Yeah. And uh, that's why, you know, yeah, that's why make uh, something exciting there. Yeah. During, during the sessions, I'm always writing pushes like uh, they did this to the blacksmith and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the blacksmith may like it or dislike it. He may have a reaction later on to the, to the players, which, may have some kind of repercussion uh later on in the town they approach the uh the 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 tailor or yeah. the leather worker and then they discover oh well that's quite an expensive price he goes yeah well Are you you know, we me? don't we don't take <laughs> too kindly about people that lay about and and uh, criticize you know the work of the blacksmith you know that sort of thing you know <laughs> the blacksmith has been my friend for 40 years and blah 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 you know you're like oh man i pissed <laughs> off the wrong person you know and that that just adds to 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 the you know realism of the game oh percussion repercussions you know yeah um piss I'm off always, one merchant and yeah, the whole merchant I'm, guild asks for double <laughs> yeah in our in our castles and crusades game the players entered a Ent entered a place, released some form of vampire wraith, something like that, 
and they left. They just were like, we're out of here, right? Well, that those things all start festering and growing. So uh, there's he, this thing has been accumulating power around the regions. The the area around is starting to get all kind of chaotic. People are being displaced <laughs> because there's evil beings in the forest, you know, uh, overtaking the uh, the centaurs, and the centaurs are becoming like ah, kind of weird, kind of malformed <laughs> things. And, and, you know, it's, it's generating its army, you know, in the in the background. And then in the meantime, they're also going, they're talking to this other guy in this other town. They go to this next town and they're starting wheel and deal. But this guy's a real evil bastard. And they're like, oh, oh man, we all like, like we're making we're making some awkward deals here. And then suddenly the, the evil bastard from this town wants to take over the old town, which is now besieged by all the evil centaurs and other creatures from that thing that you released off in the, you know, all these things are pushes. So I'm writing all these things down. Every time the players yeah. are doing something, release this thing, uh, you know, interfere with that thing, blah, blah, blah. All these are pushes that uh, create when, when you're, when your sessions is, is coming to where like a really slow spot. That's when you enter in the mercenaries that, that you double crossed way back when, to get their slaves by saying, oh yeah, well, uh, Lord such and such says that we can go ahead and requisition what we, what we want. And he's like, oh, okay. I'll, I'll settle this with the <laughs> Lord. Then, uh, here, take the slaves. I'll, I'll go ahead and work out a deal with the, with the, and then they discovered they've been double crossed. Right. Well, I bring that in when it starts getting slow. So, these pushes are, are things to go ahead and, and you, you always got to write them down and you always got to go ahead and bring them up so that it can, it yeah. fits in, in a, in a perfect spot where, cause, cause I look at my, at, at how things are progressing as a movie. So I'm taking cues off of, off of a lot of movies when, when it's starting to get slow, it's time to, time to add something to kind of put in some pressure. And, uh, those are the things that, that, uh, once you start doing that, uh, your your game starts uh, being created at the in the moment, and uh, and you don't have to do as much prep yeah. as you normally do. Yeah, I only I only yeah. prep for for premise. So if I know that this world is basically, um, you know, the setting has a land which is going to be besieged upon by the orcs of the north. There's nothing you can do as a player at the moment. This is the plan in motion of the world, and this is going to occur. Now, that is proceeding, or it could be, you know, a, a planet coming, uh, a moon is about to crash into the planet, something like that. <laughs> you know, it's it's nothing yeah. the players can do about it. It's it's the premise. It's your plan. It's It's, you know, it's what's going in motion. Maybe there's a wizard that's trying to circumvent this whole thing you know, a event and he reveals it to the players later on that this is what's happening. And the players are like, holy shit, what are we doing? You know, yeah. you, you, you gotta think and, and bring in these moments at the right time. So the players can, can feel that momentum of the game, you know, around the world. Yeah. It's actually feeling real to them. You know, uh, I think that's, that's some Absolutely. really key points. <clears throat> so, some other things, you know, um, that you can uh, you use later. I'll end this recording now, and uh, and then I'll get, I'll go ahead and uh, have it, I'll upload it later on onto uh, onto my uh, 